Hello, hello, this is Joe from Nerd in Korea. We are continuing our budget pre-con upgrades looking at blue now. Um, it's actually Chuseok here in Korea, which is kind of like, a lot of people call it Korean Thanksgiving. Sorta, kinda. Uh, it makes a bit of sense. It's like the harvest time thing, so yeah, I guess. But anyway, all right, here we go. First of all, what's budget? $2 or less according to the TCG market value? Not a sponsor, not at all. And pre-con upgrades. So blue is kind of reviled a lot of times. If you were to just base it off of like memes on Facebook, you'd think it was the worst ever. I do want to point out, this does not have counter spells. I'm going to try and put my counter spell list above, um, but I'm if I figure out how to do that. Anyway, yeah. Uh, I tried to focus on spells that increase the functionality and give you a lot of options. So you're going to find something that's right for your deck in this list, I think. Um, but yeah, kind of depends. Blue is a little more tricky, I think, to find. Like, there are a couple spells on here, I think, that are just must-haves. But in general, blue is a lot more, like, situational, I think, in some ways. Number five. Okay, Philip. Fabolipsa. Uh, I don't know. I actually practiced saying that and now I can't remember how. Lost on the range. One blue blue for a one one. So that's not great to start. Ward two. Okay, ward is better than nothing. That's what I always say and I'll just keep saying it. You may look at the top card of your library at any time. That's already super useful. If you know what card is coming, you can like make all kinds of decisions based on that. More information. Um, the top card of your library has plot. The plot cost is equal to its mana cost. You may plot non-land cards from the top of your library. Okay, so again, non-land. So unfortunately, if there's a land on top, there's nothing you can do with it. But if it's anything else, you can basically cast it. Um, it goes into exile though, so with plot you are going to pay the mana cost, but it goes into exile and on a later turn you can then put it in. Um, there's some downsides there, for instance like counter spells would not work with this very well because you have to cast it on your turn and a later turn. So there's a lot of things where you're like, yeah I don't really want to do that. Creatures I think can be very useful for. Also it's going to let you basically keep seeing what's on top of your deck. and. Uh, kind of just give you an extra card in hand. Anyway, um, 26 cents. Oh, sorry, the one last thing I want to point out about that. Plot, you do not have to pay it again, right? Once it's plotted, you cast it for free, okay? As I said, 26 cents. Number four, Brain Surge. Okay, so two in a blue. This is a lot like Brainstorm. Um, Cliff Reeser actually recommended this one, so thank you Cliff. And um, this is great for a setup card, but maybe, maybe I should read it first. So two in a blue, it is an instant. Draw four cards, then put two cards from your hand on top of your, your library in any order. This is like a card you use to set up a whole bunch of things. Um, draw four, put two back is also really incredible. Like. Four draw for uh, three mana is very, even for blue is very good. You have to put two black, two back, ba ba ba, two back. Um, this sounds like a downside, but again, you're going to be able to put exactly what you want. This is very very useful with a lot of mechanics, but particularly if you got something like a miracle. Miracle, the first card you draw on your turn, you can usually cast for a much reduced mana cost, and sometimes it even has better effects. So if you've got something like that, it's extremely useful, but I think this is always useful, right? Even just like getting four cards and like being able to chuck stuff out of your hand, this is almost like a rummaging effect, but it goes to your top of your library instead of your graveyard, so you're not really out those cards. So it's a it's kind of a weird way to look at it, but again, Brainstorm is only one mana, so that's better in a lot of ways, but it's also like a $6 card now. Uh, it was so cheap for so long, and now all of a sudden it's like, oh, this is crazy expensive. Uh, 
I've gotta dig out my brainstorms and see where they are. I've got a few, but anyway, 51 cents. Number three, Bluster Squall, my background art here. For one blue, tap target creature you don't control. Eh, okay, sure. Overload, replace target creature with each creature. So each creature you don't control, tap down at instant speed. Um, this is so, so useful. Um, this is a lot better than just like target creature cannot be blocked. This makes it so everyone can't block and also you can use it against people. Like if someone, if it's someone else's turn or about to be someone else's turn and you want to set them up to like take another player out of the game, you do that and they can untap and then they just go in and like smash. So you can kind of stop people from attacking by casting this during the first main phase. And then, uh, yeah, the follow-up, the person on the follow-up is going to just be able to like, you and that person are just going to be able to like knock them out. Or you can use this on your turn to just win. Um, 28 cents, like four mana to just win in the game. Ah, uh, yeah, I'll take that. Number two, wash out. Okay. Three and a blue for a sorcery. So this is sorcery speed. I wish it was instant speed, but return all permanents of the color of your choice to their owner's hands. So this is a mass bounce effect, which is incredible, especially if someone's someone's probably going to have a lot of creatures or blockers that share a color. Again, if they're two color, three color, whatever, Wooberg, choosing one color still bounces that, right? If they're like uh demir if they're black blue and you say blue that still gets back bounced back to their hand so you can probably make whatever opening you need and also it's all permanents of the color right so if there's problematic enchantment uh, if there's problematic whatever that's a color you can just get rid of it even if it's for a short time it'll probably get the job done also if the deck has you know if it's like a mono color deck you're playing against you're just going to put everything back in their hand, except for maybe colorless artifacts, and then they'll probably have to discard, right? You're, you're going to be taking them... It's a uh, removal with extra steps. Anyway, 27 cents. Number one. Reverse the polarity. I love this. I've been, I've been crazy about this card since day one. Um, it keeps going up in price, though. It should it's an amazing card but i'm very disappointed it used to be under a dollar i actually bought a few of these and like gave them to my friends because i love this card so much and now i'm like oh i wish i'd bought like five extra anyway one blue blue okay again um <clears throat> sorry it's a mode also counter all spells basically whirlwind denial is one mode uh switch each uh, uh switch each creature's power and toughness until end of turn Maybe? I don't... That one's kind of dumb, but anyway. Creatures can't be blocked this turn. All creatures. Cast this during your combat and just like... You, none of your creatures can be blocked. Also, it just says creatures, right? It doesn't have to be your creatures. So you can kind of use this as a political tool and be like, Hey, if you attack this person, I'll make it so you can't be blocked. And just, you know, get that problem player out of the game and, uh, hey. You can kind of flip the game on its head like that. Anyway, 189. Um, going up fast. If you're going to buy it, buy it soon, right? Do not wait on this one for sure. Anyway. The list. Fabilip. Fabilthip. The Lost on the Range, 26 cents. Brain Surge, 51 cents. Bluster Squall is 28 cents. Washout, 27 cents. Reverse the Polarity, 189 now. Seriously, like two months ago, this was under a dollar. Anyway, take it easy.